the UCL Bloomsbury project is funded for three years by the Lever Hume Trust and we are interested in showing that during the 19th century Bloomsbury was the cradle and became very fast the centre of educational enterprises of all kinds which were in some way forward-looking, many of which have rich archives which we are exploring and which we wish to pass on to other researchers as well as to the ordinary interested person. This is the house on the south side of Bedford Square in the heart of Bloomsbury where uh, the Ladies College uh, was first started up. It later became Bedford College and a part of University of London but it was the first college uh, for higher education for women. Set up in 1849 by a woman called Elizabeth Reed who had been widowed early in life and was wealthy. So she set up the college here in this house uh, and she got a number of the professors from University College London down the road to come and teach the women here. In 1878 it was University College London which first allowed women to take degrees but in 1849 you've got this very first attempt to allow women to think that they're actually capable of studying hard subjects at a high level. Having lived and worked here for many years and having written about a number of these people I found that it wasn't difficult to come to the idea of actually doing a huge study with help and with a team uh, of 19th century Bloomsbury with UCL at the heart of it, uh, but also looking at a number of other institutions which are much less well known. When I'd arrived at UCL I was always fascinated by walking around Bloomsbury and discovering this strange mixture of very um, grand residential houses and so many institutions and like Rosemary I'd always wondered why that happened, how that happened, so I'm very glad to be able to have the opportunity to trace the development. There are two things that I'm in charge of really. One is the website. I'm responsible for making sure that everything we discover gets edited in some form and put onto our website. And the other thing that I do is I'm the main person who goes around archives looking at archival material relating to our institutions. I've got medical records here which are very interesting and these are from the early years of University College Hospital, these are from the 1840s and these are the medical records relating to the patient for whom those are the Carswell drawings. These are the diseased hands of the patient, Catherine Holmes, who came in and was treated but sadly died. The first kindergarten in Britain was set up in Tavistock Place in 1854 by a couple of German political exiles, Johannes Ronge and his wife Bertha, who had come over along with other exiles from the European revolutions in 1848 to escape censorship and illiberality at home. We need to remember that now what we consider as mainstream, that is teaching young children through play and leisure and games, uh, was in the mid and early Victorian period completely revolutionary. <laughs> Bloomsbury itself grew during the 19th century from a very small place in 1800 to the place that we know it now and Bloomsbury is really now as it was uh, by the middle of the 19th century. Here behind me is Mary Ward House which was first known as the Passmore Edward Settlement named after two people Mary Ward better known then as the novelist Mrs Humphrey Ward and John Passmore Edwards, who had been a penniless young man in Cornwall, who had made his fortune coming to London in the newspaper business. And both of them were very keen to uh, extend education to the poor, and in particular to offer play and learning facilities for the children of the poor in the days before universal education. Uh, and this was an innovatory thing in the 1890s to attempt to extend education and leisure activities also for the poor of the area. Bloomsbury is still uh, a very cultural uh, and uh, intellectual uh, place with lots of uh, institutions and organisations uh, and archives. When people talk about Bloomsbury they, they think of it as this kind of centre of progressive education and, and medical research um, which is really interesting because that's just a continuous history right from the 1820s. 